Hello, hello, dear chess friends. Welcome to the next episode of Late Friday Night's Banter Bleeds. I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky, and we're going to play some instructive games, I hope. Uh, why hope? Because, uh, well, actually, as for my today's uh, Bleeds experience, uh, I'm just uh, blundering like crazy. So maybe this will continue uh, during our session, but I do hope that I will manage to play several decent games at least. All right, so uh, I play against uh, premium users of Chess24 within this session. So if you are not a premium user, you can watch, but you cannot play. So to improve the situation, just go premium and uh, you can actually uh, do it cheaper if you will use this code. All right, so now let's go to uh, our challengers. Let's see what do we have here, as usual, I will start with several games against uh, the guys I've never played before. Uh, by the way, uh, let me know uh, what is going on to the uh, sound, to the picture. Is everything okay with the stream and so forth? So, let's see. Uh, a lot of uh, challenges already. The first one is Shelling Ford, by the way. But we'll come back to uh, the normal order of challenges slightly later. Um, so first, let's see if we have somebody I've never played before. I've never, never, ever played before. Mm, it's very hard to find. It's very hard to find the guy. Um, no, here is the one. Um, so accept. Topper Halley. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So I'm playing with white pieces. Let's start with the e4. And c6. Okay. Didn't expect that. Didn't expect that. Let's try to go away from main lines. Dr. Balu says everything is fine. That's nice. That is nice. I can hear a mark, so Mike is okay. Yeah, Giovanni, that's that's right. So Mike is uh, okay. Mark is around. So let's see. This week was, by the way, quite good. Because you know, guys, I managed to win my game against Mami Diarf in Pro Chess League with black pieces. That was uh, yesterday. But today I'm playing badly. <laughs> so probably I actually uh, used all my energy and all my power yesterday. All right, so e4 is under attack. I guess I can play e5 now. What should I play here? Not a G5 or maybe H3. Well, if H3, then simply bishop to H5. Okay, let's let's see. Maybe there will be bishop takes F3. Uh, question from Kramnikson, when you beat those guys, do you feel as happy as we do drawing you? <laughs> well, actually, um, how to say. Um, so when you beat those guys, that is actually my only win so far against a uh, very top player. By the way, he's currently number two in the world. And that's the thing. So it happens... Uh, not so often, I mean. Uh, but yeah, it feels great. Especially when you manage to win in a good style, which actually happened uh, in my game against Mami Diarf. So, c5. Uh, I might be wrong, but uh, I guess here there is an interesting idea of uh, doing what? Of taking on d5. At least it should be considered. 
should be considered. Let's try this interesting sacrifice. By the way, uh, as near as yesterday, I guess, no, two days ago, I played the similar position against uh, Bologon. And uh, actually, I managed to win the game, but uh, I was not uh, sure that uh, I had a winning position throughout the process. That was a blitz game, just an accidental blitz game against Bologon. So the point is that I take two pawns immediately if e takes d5 and after that I attack b7 and potentially f7 as well. So if takes bishop d5 knight c6 probably I can try queen to f3 attacking both f7 and c6. This may be potentially annoying for black but well honestly I think it's not correct. SK Mix says, I was watching you today on chess.com, you was a bit lost. Yeah, I was just playing very, very badly. That's what I mean, in fact. So, my today's blitz experience is quite, quite bad. That's why I'm not sure that I'll manage to play this in chess tonight. So that's the idea so far. I just attack f7 when I checkmate black. At the same time, I exert pressure on knight c6. So uh, I can potentially get three pawns for a piece or something like that. But I think it's it, it's it, not correct. I mean, just a psychological pressure, not more than that. Yeah, queen e7. Okay, now if I play bishop to g5, there will be counter attack with knight to d4. So I suppose I have to take here, unfortunately. But I have some compensation, I guess. Because, um, well, it will be not that simple for black to complete a development. At the moment, I just capture with the temple. So I already have three pawns for a piece. But the problem here is that uh, d4 is already under attack and uh, black has a good chance just to capture it next move. So I'm not sure what should I do here in this position, just a castle or you know, c3 protecting that pawn, or maybe bishop to e3, making this develop move. Okay, forgetting about b2 pawn, because I guess it's not that important. So, which move is more or less fine for white? Because white is definitely fighting for um, survival here 100%. I guess c3 after all, I guess c3. But if I play c3, cd4, cd4, queen b4 check, bishop d2, queen b2 castles, queen takes d2, I will be two minor pieces down. Potentially a very, very dangerous thing. Hmm. Okay, let's check it. <laughs> Well, in fact, after cd4, cd4, queen b4, bishop d2, queen d4 was possible. Ugh. Bad thing. Okay, now what to do? There is cd4, cd4, bishop b4 threat. I think I have a very bad position here. So I have to take. Now I say f4, protecting, maybe intended to play f5 at some point. Right, key two. Yeah, very bad position. 
probably not completely lost, but very close to, because black has great blockading potential. And if placed correctly, it will be very hard for white to survive it. So yeah, in this situation, this capture on d5 isn't correct. Isn't correct. Knight c3 was possible. That was a huge blunder. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible to survive it. All right, resign. Yep, very bad game. So. Knight d5 is incorrect. By the way, um, in the game uh, against Balogun, uh, I don't know why, but uh, he played something strange here. So he played something like bishop e7 or something, giving him a chance to take on b7. I don't even remember what he played. Uh, but knight c6 is obviously correct, and uh, I think there is nothing. Because after queen f3, queen e7, unfortunately, there is no bishop g5 possibility. So it's simply uh, not correct sacrifice. That's it. All right. Now you know that. <laughs> okay. Um, let's continue. So somebody else I've never ever played before. Let's see. Nexo Chess 24. Yeah. Never ever played before. Except. Playing with black. Playing with black. Italian. With d4 or, yeah, with d4. All right. And knight to c3. Okay. So let's remember what to do here. So bishop goes to f6 first. Yep. Now that goes to e7. Now d6. Now we take and h6 and takes and bishop to e6. So it is a long theory. It is a long old theory. Rook to e3 with the idea of rook to h3. What should I play here? C6 is a move. As far as I remember. Mm, let's try it. Oh, rook to b3 first. That's strange. A bit. Maybe there is no big difference, but... Well, rook usually goes to h3. That is definitely something new to me. So now I think I can play d5, attacking the bishop. And, uh, well, I can also just play queen to c7. I don't understand the idea of rook to b3, honestly. So I can play queen c7. And after rook h3, I just take and then castles long. So I don't see the compensation for white. Because if I play d5 immediately, there is some like rook b7, rook d7, probably it's also not that dangerous. But I think queen c7 is just good enough here. Okay, now d5 is absolutely playable. Yeah, white somehow misplayed it, I think. But no castles. Oh, that was the trick. Oh my goodness. What am I doing, huh? <laughs> That's amazing. All right, bishop a6 is very strong. 
my god. That was probably the trick, right? So Castling wasn't correct. Castling wasn't correct. Oh. You guys are just beating me. Are just beating me tonight. What a trick, huh? Probably it's probably it's a well known th trick. And I just didn't know that. Okay, now I know this. At least something useful. Yeah, now position is absolutely lost. There is no compensation whatsoever. Absolutely lost position, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everything but not castling is good, I think. Almost everything, of course. Even starting with the B6, I think, could have been playable for black. And then castling, if necessary. Because it is white's, obviously white's only idea here, only trick. I mean, this bishop A6, wow. Yeah, this is very bad. Starting with two losses, I think it's for the first time. Okay, I didn't lose this game by now, but it's very close. It's very, very close to losing it. Okay, Queen C5 is a threat. Unfortunately, it looks like a decisive, decisive move. Okay, let's go there. Yeah, and Queen G4 was much better, of course, than Queen C2. That's true. Even something like creating a threat of Queen B4 was great. So. White is obviously winning here. Obviously winning. Even after all this not very ambitious moves, I think White is still winning. Because my king is very bad. I don't have enough resources to attack, I guess. So, why can't win this position? By any possible method. Right, Queen E7 don't quite understand this threat, but even this is probably good enough. Even this is probably good enough. Okay, not to G4 maybe. Just attacking F2 at least.
All right, just protecting it. Yeah, there is no chance. I mean, it's it's absolutely lost. Okay. Yeah, I'll resign because I have only several seconds and absolutely lost position. Okay, so rook to b3, such a strange move, and actually I didn't, I didn't know that first of all, and uh, I didn't even expect that there will be something behind this move. So bishop a6, very surprising idea. I guess after rook to b3, it is possible even to try something like, you know, b5. I think b5 is playable. <laughs> Uh, followed by something like queen to b6 maybe i don't know so it's a strange position i know that i have a lot of weaknesses but i have some sort of extra pawn and if there is no direct attack i think it should be just just uh, gradually winning for black uh, but okay i just uh yeah got into this trap queen c7 d5 bishop d3 so here white doesn't have direct threats unless i castle long okay uh so I should have played something else, of course. Maybe uh, like king to f8. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just to, to keep the king in the center here, just to try something like. Well, it's not that easy to find a useful move here. In fact, um, castling short here looks very dangerous. But maybe even castling short is uh, possible after white played g3 move. So who knows? Yeah, interesting. Interesting idea of just playing bishop to a6. Maybe b6 should have been played first. But this weakens position. Don't really like it. Okay, this deserves uh, proper analysis, this idea of rook to b3, I think. Surprising. Surprising tactics of castling bishop a6. Okay. Um, congratulations. Uh, let's go further. And since... I guess we no longer have guys I've never played before on the list. We just go uh, one by one uh, using the normal order of challenges. And Shalin Ford is here. Shalin Ford is here. And I'm playing with black pieces. Let us finally try... Uh, to play something normal. I don't know. Something decent. Like normal chess. So bugger Indian. Okay, so this potentially gives me a chance to play a4, but uh, right now a4 is not that uh, prepared, so I guess I have to play something else. What can I play potentially? I can castle, I can play d5, I can play d6. I think d6 preparing e5 is a possibility for me. So let's try d6. Since we exchanged dark squared bishops, I, I guess it's it's a logical idea in general to try to occupy um, dark squares with pawns. So e4, e5, something like this. Okay, g3 is also very logical, of course. So should I play b6, bishop b7 here? Just to fight for this long diagonal, which white can be a possibility.
queen c2. First of all, covering b3. Second of all, preparing e4. Knight to g5 isn't a threat, of course. b4 is probably White's idea as well. So let us start with rook e8 move. Preparing e5. And now e5. Okay. So white potentially wants to take on e5 and play knight to d5. As simple as that. How to be prepared for that? I think I can consider also just taking on d4 and playing knight to c5. Attacking e4 several times. And then maybe a4. This can be potentially an interesting thing, but white will have very nice centralization. I think this knight to d5 will be quite an annoying move for me. Mm, so I'm not quite sure how to play here. a4 is an interesting move right now. But this also prepares a4. At the same time, I should understand that e5 is ready, more or less. So I guess because of this threat, I have to somehow go away with the queen, which means white can play b4 if he wants. All right, my position is already bad. My position is already bad. White has advantage in space. Why controls the center better than I do? Which means I definitely misplayed it. All right. But f4, so white doesn't want really to play b4. Which is probably sort of chance for me, so. Let's at least fix some sort of a weakness in white's camp. Otherwise, it's absolutely unclear why did I capture on d4 and why I gave my opponent so much space? Knight to d5, all right. Looks very annoying for black. Very annoying, but I think that it's not completely lost. So we still have some chances to survive it. The bishop is awful, no questions. But since white is going to play e5 at some point, my bishop can potentially get some chances to be improved. And since I have this great knight on c5, position of which is ensured because of a4, well, in general, this all makes my position not entirely lost. A lot of light squared weaknesses, no questions. E6 is just an amazing weakness. C6 is an amazing weakness. But why should come up with a plan and it's not that simple, I think.
Okay, now to e6. Mm, not sure. Of course, it's absolutely lost with only five seconds on the clock. Yeah. All right. Of course, it was lost. Yeah. After I took on D5, uh, oh, sorry, on D4 and so forth, I told you that. Of course, I misplayed my position because. After knight to c5 and rook to e1, uh, the thing I underestimated was this threat of e5. So there is already a threat of e5, which may be very, very annoying. Maybe I could have actually uh, tried something like a4 anyway. Probably this e5 is not, uh, I mean, winning by force, I don't know. So let's check. If I take here, well, if takes on f6, I can go away with the bishop. I will have very bad pawn structure, but my bishop is potentially quite dangerous. So maybe it's playable. Maybe it's playable. So something like bishop to b7 should be considered here. Not sure. Um, if king takes g2, maybe I can take on e5 even. So rook takes c5. Oh no, here is knight to c6. So probably with the pawn only. In which case, uh, what can I do? I mean, feels like I have everything protected here. So even if knight jumps somewhere, I just go away with the queen. Maybe I'm missing something. For example, after knight c6 and queen to c8, there is an interesting trick of uh, rook to d8. I mean, if I take with the rook, then knight to e7 and takes my queen. But I think I can play just queen to b7 here. And white somehow tricked himself because knight on c6 is pinned and attacked already. Yeah, so maybe maybe a4 immediately was better, slightly, but I think it doesn't change really uh, the character of the position. So now gets to d5 at some point and uh, what has a great advantage uh, in space and so on. So maybe ed4 was stupid. Uh, instead of doing that, uh, I should have played something like uh, queen to c8 or queen to b8 um, and so on. Mm, probably I should have played something else in general because uh, in my opinion when you have the pawn on a5 this plan with the e5 is quite dubious because too many uh, weakened squares right so d5 b5 not so clear where to put this queen and uh, a lot of problems in general uh, but the best strategy is just to stay um, not very active here and wait for a much better opportunity to clarify the things in the center so I was um, like too fast in taking on d4, I think. It was too too slow, like a turtle. So um, that's what I mean. 
uh, I'm playing badly today. That is something uh, I can't really change. So sometimes we just have very bad days. That's the thing. Okay, next one, Keramnik student. Here we go. E4, E5. Would be nice to actually lose each and every game tonight. Would be something completely new to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Fresh approach. Bishop to C4. Okay, should I just play d6 here? Or knight to f6? Well, knight to f6 is also interesting. But it's actually uh, something in the direction of losing each and every game, in fact. Knight to d2, so I expected knight c6 and e5, but okay. Why well, decided not to force the matters immediately? And maybe I can punish him for it. Knight e4 and d5. Is it a good way to equalize immediately or not? Not sure, but let's try. And castles. Castles first. To save the key. And now let's take on d5. I think if compared to the vast majority of positions that potentially arise in uh, Scotch, this one is quite pleasant for black. Uh, can I play just bishop f5? Continuing the development and attacking the knight. Stupid move, bishop f5 and queen f3 is just a good reaction. So now there is a shred of just uh, taking on d5 and knight to f6, winning my queen. Which means bishop f5 is a clear loss of time. So bishop b6 immediately was much better, for example, if compared to bishop f5. In fact, I should have played something like c6. That was a correct move. Okay, let's grab the knight. And c6. Should be equal, I guess. Rook to e1. What is the idea? To attack my bishop, I understand. But in general, where the rook goes? What if I just play bishop b4 with the temple? I hope it's not a blunder. And this means, okay, just won the time. I expected rook e2, in fact, but in that case, I could have played rook e8 as well. All right, so now I think my position is not that bad. what to do with my pieces. First of all, I don't really like this bishop on b4. It is misplaced. So let's put it on d6. If bishop d5, then cd5, and queen d5 leads to bishop takes h2. This sort of tactics I, I, I can see tonight. <laughs> that is my level. 
Now, what I wanted to try is bishop to c7. To put my queen on d6, that's the point. Okay, some weakening of the position is here. Now, what about bishop to b6 attacking d4? Now let's activate the rooks. Let's activate the rooks. So this bishop on c3 inspires me. I mean, it's quite bad. So I have several ideas of just playing rook to e8 now, maybe rook to f6. Um, let's play rook to e8. I think in general, the simplification should be okay for black. Especially if as a result, we'll have something like ending with my dark squared bishop against white's dark squared bishop. It will look like a classic one. Uh, with a good bishop against a bad bishop. But there will be a big question if there will be a breakthrough because pawn structure is completely symmetrical after, let's say, bishop d5, c d5. Maybe it will be a draw. Okay, rook e5 is a nice resource I didn't consider. My knight on d5 is under pressure. So if I take on c3, there is bishop e6, unfortunately. So maybe I should take on e5 and play queen to c5, attacking the bishop on c4 and exerting some pressure on f2. But now if I play queen c5, okay, bishop goes to a2 or something. Okay. Now position is unclear, I think. It's no longer that comfortable for black. And I have no time. All right. So let's play this move first. Yeah, correct. Protecting f7. Knight c3 wasn't possible because of queen f7. Now I think I can take the bishop. Because my bishop b6 controls d8. All right, extra pawn, opposite covered bishops, some weaknesses in white's camp. I think it's a good position for black. And the situation on the clock is also not that awful anymore. We both have like 30 seconds. Time to make room for Keen. This is a blunder. This is a big blunder. Huge one. All right. 
So the first 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 point tonight, <laughs> and also not that uh, great in fact. So here somewhere in the opening, I think I was completely okay. Uh, by the way, deserved attention for white to try to fight for this pawn, maybe to play something like queen to, you know, b3 or something. But in that case, I think I can ignore it. I just can play bishop d6 and uh, I'll have some initiative against h2 and so on. So, all right, castling was, was correct. Knight to d5, knight to e4. Of course, I should have played c6 immediately uh, over protecting d5. And only then thinking of... Uh, developing my light script bishop finding a good square for it and so forth so bishop f5 was just a stupid move because of this queen f3 and after bishop e4 queen e4 uh, okay white has pair of bishops um i don't want to say that white is better here maybe just slightly better maybe just position is simply equal because uh, white's pair of bishops is compensated by a uh, slightly better pawn structure for black and this knight on d5 which is quite good and the only way to uh, actually deal with this knight is to capture it where after i have uh, definitely has a better bishop because uh, pawns are fixed on dark squares mainly which is bad for a dark squared bishop so uh, rook to e1 okay bishop b4 here i thought uh, white would play something like rook e2 in which case, after rook e8, it's possible to simplify position uh, completely, which should be good for, for black, in fact. Because uh, now it's not clear where to put this bishop, maybe to g5, which is not that inspiring position. And uh, I guess black should be okay here. There is a play against d4. For instance, I can play h6, attacking the guy if bishop h4, then rook e4, attacking the bishop and pawn on d4 simultaneously. All right, so that's maybe why uh, why I decided not to do this. Uh, but I think queen e8 is not the only move, so it's possible to play uh, queen to c2, let's say. Yeah, queen c2 is absolutely playable at first glance. So if I take on e2, okay, bishop takes or queen takes, then a3, bishop goes somewhere and so forth. But in general, we can notice that uh, White's problem here is that uh, Bishop C1 has no squares, has no good squares. I mean, has no useful work uh, on the board. Uh, that's why Black is doing okay here. That's why uh, Black is probably decide which fights for advantage potentially, and so on. But okay, my my opinion that position should be just equal. So Rook E5 uh, takes takes Queen C5 Bishop H2 Rook E7. Um, I already wanted to take on c3, so it was necessary to do something with this bishop. Um, maybe, maybe taking on... Um, well, taking on d5 was uh, not that clear because of queen d5, for instance. And if queen d5, uh, cd5, there is an interesting trick. So if rook goes to d1, uh, then d4 is possible. Uh, the idea I saw. So if bishop d4, then rook d7... But yeah, and if rook c1, there is no uh, chance, I mean, to exploit this weakness of the back rank because of rook d4, rook c8, and rook to d8. So yeah, because of that, position is uh, probably uh, still better for black. So it's not clear how to protect this e5, maybe with something like rook to e1 only. Mm, in which case, I have a passed pawn already, slightly better bishop and so forth. But maybe that is just, just, just again, the balanced position. I don't know don't know how to uh, evaluate it correctly mm, maybe there is a better way uh, maybe something like queen f5 just protecting e5 and creating sort of queen c8 checkmate by the way um, in which case i'm not sure how to react so maybe g6 but then queen c8 followed by e6 i take on c3 takes on f7 can be just something crazy and f2 is hanging as well Unclear, unclear, but queen f5 looks interesting at least. Uh, slightly better than uh, rook to d1, because after rook to d1, I just take and I win some material, right? Uh, in any case. So now black is definitely completely okay. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, the next one is drunken lawyer, except playing with white. Let's go. Rui Lopez. Rui Lopez. 
Okay, d6, c3. Preparing d4. Knight to f6. So now I think I can play d5, right? I mean, looks like an extra pawn. Looks like an extra pawn. But black obviously has some counterplay, because if pair of bishops, maybe, maybe, it's just a guy for white. I mean, at the moment, I can't see a great initiative for black. Which means if I manage to complete a development, I will be just a pawn up. So how to deal with the knight e4 to start with? Knight to d2 looks like a move here. In which case, knight jumps to c5, then I play queen to c2 maybe. And what? And I'm going to play either b4 or knight to b3. One of these two moves. But then d4 can be played. So maybe it makes sense for me to start with the bishop e3 here. Yeah, I think so. Just bishop e3, controlling additionally this d4 square, and then knight e2, next move. Bishop f5, okay. Gives me a chance potentially to play knight e4 with the temple, maybe even right now. Um, knight to c5 can be played against knight d4, queen goes away, bishop can jump to d3. Again, I'm not sure it gives black anything specific, but I want to complete a development. That is my primary goal. Okay, knight takes. Can take with the knight, can take with the bishop. Which one is better? Probably with the bishop, because my knight is basically going to occupy d4. And this bishop can also go to a5, even. So a5 is also an interesting square for this guy. No, knight to d4 is a blunder because. Black can capture an e5 in that case. So let's bring the bishop to c3, because now if diagonal is being opened, it will be quite good to have the bishop there. King to h8, very strange play, so black kind of spends a lot of time in preparation, do you know? If that is an acceptable way of playing it when you have a material disadvantage. Let's activate the rooks then. It's time. Okay, bishop e4. I think I can come up with this trick. Knight to d4 now. Attacking e6 square, intending to win the exchange. Okay. Now I can think of f3. I can th think of knight to e6 as well. I can think of just e6 with a pawn. Whew, a lot of interesting moves. Are possible. So knight to e6, queen to c8, obviously. Is there a follow up? I mean, knight g7, king g7, something like this. Is there anything or not? Not clear. I guess there is nothing. Absolutely. Alright, let's try with this. To do something with this move. And now something like this, so knight to e6, 
and knight to f4, attacking d5, and also intending to take on g6. This looks very promising. What was played? Bishop to f7. Okay. So now I can take on f6, creating a weakness on f6, a serious one. Oh, taken with the bishop. That's strange. That is very strange. I think this is just a winning position for, for white. Yeah, now two pawns, but it's no longer about pawns. Look at this keen on h8. Just completely exposed, I think. Rook to e6. Okay, let's put the queen on f4. Attacking c7 and f6 simultaneously. Very bad position for black. All the pieces are misplaced. Queen b8. Um, let's take this one. Lots of extra units, but only 30 seconds on the clock, which is which is bad. But okay. Still manageable. Still manageable task. Okay, lost in time, but position is absolutely winning for, I don't know, 100 or 200 moves already. Um, probably somewhere I missed a clear win with a straightforward attack. I don't know, let's have a look at this position, for example. So this one is already lost for black, I, I believe. So e takes f6, takes, takes, takes. Mm, knight to d5 is probably a good idea. Rook e6. Maybe here or something, I don't know. But okay, queen f4. Why? Why is it bad? It's it's good, I mean. Um Queen to b2 is a threat, right? And rook to c6 simultaneously. So uh knight to c7 could have been played. Knight to c7 was an interesting try. In which case rook takes c6 and uh, rook to d7, so I calculated this as well, but I, I wasn't sure if it is a good thing for me in general, because there are some tricks like queen b6 check, then, well, queen f2 is impossible, by the way, because I cover c1. Uh, so who knows, maybe that was correct for me. So just knight to c7 followed by rook to d7, don't know. But uh, even the way I played, it was absolutely winning, right? So queen b2, knight to g4, maybe knight to e4 was slightly better, just covering the e file and preventing this rook e2. Um, yeah, well, almost anything is winning here. <clears throat> After rook f8, by the way, I, I have no idea why didn't I play this. 
move rook to d7 just attacking the bishop because the rook on f8 isn't protected and if there is rook to e2 i can still just take on f7 because after rook g2 king h1 h2 is protected with the knight as well so that is absolutely lost for black yeah probably that was the great moment for me to win the game uh faster just rook d7 and so forth all right uh let's go further chase paul is the next one And I'm playing with black pieces. So, what do we have here? Something like London? No, Kolle. Most likely. Okay. There may be also a transposition to one of not very dangerous for black queens in the defense lines. For example, if c4, if I play c4 instead of this c3 or something. So it's like queens in the defense. One of the lines which is usually not that dangerous. So I can consider c5, but after that, uh, something like typical d5 is possible. I guess d7, d5 is just a very nice one. C takes d5, all right, e d5. Controlling a four square and intending to occupy e4 at some point. Now, what I want to do is ideally to put the knight on d7, bishop on d6, and at some point knight to e4. Knight to e5 intending to support it with the f4, I guess. Okay. We'll have some play, I think, based on c5. And another idea behind a6, I mean, the initial one is to cover b5 and uh, to, to prevent knight to b5. Another idea is, of course, to play b6, b5 at some point. Maybe like right now. Queen to h3, what is the threat? The threat is to take on d7 and after queen d7 to take on h7. And if knight h7, then queen takes d7. Oh, that's a tactical trick. Tactical trick, pretty annoying one. But I can play, I guess, just knight to b6. Yeah, let's play knight to b6, going away from that tactics and being ready to occupy e4 if there is an attack uh, on my knight. So for example, now I can just play knight to e4, I guess. All right, because I control that square sufficiently with my bishop and with my pawn. Feels like I have a good position but maybe I'm missing something. So <laughs> there is another tactical shot. So the bishop takes c5. There is knight to h6. Oh my god. Don't tell me I'm losing. Well, maybe not so easily because... All right, let's take. Anyway, it's the only move. And knight to h6 was was quite annoying, but probably king h8 is still okay for me.
Yeah, I'm just blundering a lot. Just blundering a lot today. So there is no question if I blunder in this or that game, it's a question when. And there is the thing. So queen on e7 is already very bad because now knight h6 works perfectly. Because if knight's f5, oh my god. Oh, this is so painful. Yeah, it's lost, absolutely. D takes c4, knight h6, bye bye. Game over. Yeah. That is just, yeah, beaten, beaten in each and every game. Um, I should have canceled this episode, I think. So, why did I resign? Very simple, knight to h6 check. If g takes h6, then queen check. And it's already a almost a checkmate. So the only defense is queen to g5 or something. It's clear it's lost. After king to h8, which was possible in many cases, uh, now white has bishop g7 and knight to f5. So queen e7 was probably the worst move ever. Uh, instead of playing queen to e7, I should have played, uh, I don't know, maybe queen to c8 or maybe queen to e8, something like that. Already looks very dubious, I know, but probably still playable. Or well, queen e7, it's just, my god. Shroomel. One point out of how many games? Very, very weak play. So Shrumel decided just to checkmate me, I think, directly. Good strategy, taking into account what I did in previous games. So I have a good center now. This queen on h5 is not necessarily very good. I have a feeling that it is just misplaced. That's why Jose says, what do American beer and having sex in the board have in common? I can make a guess, maybe. A lot of water <laughs> around, or <laughs> something like this. I don't know. Now BD7. So Bishop to G5. So what is the answer to Ihozex? Tell me. I'm just thinking of playing knight to g5 or knight to h2. Uh, trying to do something with this bishop g4, it's annoying. Maybe I should play just a normal developer move like, well, bishop b3 will be just a blunder of the knight on f3, but. You know, let's play knight to h2, come on. Going away and uh, actually.
Vielleicht <lacht> <Leid ihn> schon. <lacht> okay. I was close to the right answer, but... But this one is, is really, really cool. <lacht> E5, all right. What about playing um, just F3 first and then D5? There is nice C5. I can't really trap that bishop, but it feels like I'm very close to trapping the queen. So what if I play F3? Bishop B6, D5, knight C5, queen E2. Then bishop goes away somewhere, plays something like bishop g5, and there is g4. Am I stupid blundering something, or is it really a, an interesting way of playing this position? Let's check. So bishop is hanging. When the bishop goes away, I just play bishop g5. That's that's my idea. Protecting h4 and intending g4. I should win at least a minor piece, I think. Okay, now g4, knight g4, fg4, bishop g4, uh, queen takes g4, I'm winning. So knight on h2 is very nice, protecting g4. It's very important, I mean. I grab two pieces now, all right? One will be regained, of course, but it's not enough. I'm still a minor piece up. I don't know, to take on h5 and then on g5 or on g5 immediately. I think both options are quite playable. Should be just resignable. But no one is going to resign against me tonight because Everybody saw what happened in previous games, right? So it will be just a stupid idea to resign against me. There are great chances if you just play on. No matter how bad is your position. I'm just going to protect what is hanging. That is my strategy. So only one poem for a missing piece. Only one. Only one pawn should be not enough. Um, 
Let's take it. It's safe. Because there was a chance to blunder a checkmate on F2 or something. Now there is no such a checkmate, which is good. Okay, at least something, right? At least something. So very interesting how this queen was trapped. So I had the feeling that queen h5 is not a great idea. I mean, not this one, but this one. So queen h5, but... Okay, I wasn't clear if I have a chance to trap it or not. So probably at some point it was better for black just to run back <laughs> to a5 and to c7 or something. Because I don't see a clear way to actually prevent all this uh, complications unless black plays in like h6 here but well if black plays h6 here I have just a very strong center and I have some time to uh, exploit it right so that's the thing all right uh, let's go further the next is uh, Graf von Palin except um, let's try another three again C5, E4. Well, I'm not sure, but I had a feeling that uh, Graf von Palin is more into um, French defense, right? That's why after C5 I played E4, because I thought, all right, I tricked my opponent with this order of moves. But feels like, well, he's also not against playing some Sicilian. Interesting. But a6, come on, what's 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 that? That's strange. So, all this gives me some extra tempi. So if knight g4, I just go bishop g1. If knight here, it's very tempting to try something like taking on c6 and e5 instead of playing f5. Because if I play f5 now, uh, it will be not that simple for me to fight for d5 square. But who knows? Maybe it's still possible. Knight e4, bishop d4, e5, bishop f2, bishop h4. I mean, that is still possible to play for this d5 outpost. b6. Let's go there. So black probably played h6 just to prevent bishop g5. <clears throat> but as we may notice, I found another square to try the same plan. Obviously, bishop first, just to have this amazing knight against this awful bishop. <laughs> so it's a classic advantage. 
something like 50 years ago, everyone would consider this position absolutely winning for white. Already here. Nowadays, everything is different. Nowadays, you have to prove. So. Let's start with this move. Preventing Black's play along the C file. A6 is vulnerable, which stops black from playing, say, rook to c8. Oh, g6, I guess it creates just a new weakness for me. So now there are so many weaknesses. So should I just take it? Or centralize this rook first? Also not bad. Could have also played Queen to G4, was also a great move. I mean, just attacking everything everywhere. Can take on B5, can play Queen G4. I don't know which one is better. Let's take on B5, I can't see why not, honestly. And back to e2. b2 is still protected. If necessary, I can play b4. And my knight will protect c3, and c3 will protect b4. And there is no chance for black to attack my pawns on the queen side. Which is great. H5. Okay. Let's play B4. Now. What to do now? For example, Rook to A1 looks not that stupid anymore. Because A file is open and I can bring my Rook to A6. I can bring my Rook to A7. A lot of very tempting options. H4. All right, now I should think of just taking on g6 and playing queen g4, or, well, the other order of moves. You know, let's take and queen g4. g6 is hanging. Rook on c8 is potentially hanging as well. Say, knight takes f6, rook f6, rook f6, queen f6, and queen takes c8. Something like that can be also the threat. Uh, bishop g7, right? Now I can take on c8, winning the exchange. Do I really need it? Because queen g6 looks even better. Queen to g6 looks even better than that. Because this knight on d5 is much more important than anything else, I guess. K 
Okay, what about taking on the fate now? Queen takes the fate, then rook takes a8. Yeah, so the super knight will protect everything on both flanks, especially this f4 square, so I mean, black probably hopes to come up with a perpetual or something. But the knight on d5 will prevent it, that's the idea. All right, so old good advantage of the knight on d5 against the dark squared bishop, which has no work, nothing, all right? Another, another proof of that. Okay, Cobra is the next. Have a feeling that uh, tonight I will play all the challengers. All the challengers, because a lot of guys just uh, decided to go away after very first games, I guess. Let's go. So extra pawn on the queen side. Black has this doubled ones on the king side. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean a lot at the moment. And this order of moves with queen c7 already. Maybe I have queen e2 check now. But bishop goes to e6, right? Doesn't look very convincing. So let's play knight e2. Looks like a bit different if compared to our previous game. So we had the same line, I guess. This time, black plays without castling. Probably intended to castle on, I don't know. But usually in this line, black castles short. Now, of course, it's obviously impossible because bishop takes h7 check and then goes back somewhere. G3, the idea is just to play bishop to f4. That's the point. I want to exchange my bad bishop for that great one on d6. And castle's long. All right. Let's continue with the plan. We're exchanging that bishop. It's risky, right? Having g3 and castle in there. I know. It's definitely risky. So it's time to simplify position to prevent the attack, I guess. But 
is there really a chance to simplify it? That's a good question. Question Andre Tarish next training Tuesdays again about your game. So practical approach to it. Um, I'm not sure that uh, the next training Tuesday will be will be Tarish. <laughs> I didn't discuss the topic of the next training Tuesday, actually. <laughs> That's interesting. Is it already scheduled or what happened? Okay, let's take here. I have four time to simplify position. Just exchange everything like, except for the bishop, <laughs> maybe. <clears throat> so definitely have to exchange rooks. At least I can bring my bishop to g2, right? Yeah, now I see this interesting idea. So just to bring my bishop to g2, that will protect my king. So there will be no checkmate at least. Yeah, I can do it. Not a problem to Ihoz X. So. Let's go to G2 and protect this position. By the way, from g2, my bishop will not only cover the h1 square, but also exert pressure on c6. So now, this typical plan of b4, b5 becomes quite natural, I think. Delayed Fanchetto. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, boys and girls, b4, a4, b5. That's my plan. f4. Good move. So now I have to protect my g3 somehow. I think queen to d3 can be considered as an option. And if fg3, I will take with the queen. Simplifying the things. Playing solid. That's what I wanted to try. Attacking g5 and e6 simultaneously. F takes g3. So to take with the queen or to take with the pawn? Let's take with the pawn. Now I can take g5, right? Right, but first I want to bring all the pieces to the game. Another rook as well. Yeah, 
yeah, it's just domination. Complete domination. I control the whole board. I control the whole board. Yeah. All right. Nice try, Cobra. You were very close. You were very close, but well, I protected well. There was an interesting moment where it's why Hoxek suggested uh, playing e5 and bringing the queen to attack. Maybe it deserved attention, so it was somewhere around this moment. So it takes g3, takes g3, f4, queen d3. Uh, maybe here, e5, is not even a sacrifice because I can't take on e5. Yeah, e5 here deserves serious attention. But then I play work to d1, I think. So probably there was a suggestion to play it here. Uh, but uh, I can take on f5, right? So. I think this position is great for white uh, because uh, this is not really dangerous. If queen goes to h2, I just go to f1. There is no follow up. Okay. So yeah, that is the point behind having the bishop here. So even if there is check on h2, I just go away. So there is a problem with the follow up for black in this line. So anyway, I, I think f4 was correct after queen to d3. Uh, here, I think Black should uh, search for improvements. Maybe just something like Knight to f6, in fact. Bringing the Knight closer, uh, intending to attack g3 after taking it. Or bringing the Knight to g4. So the Knight was needed in the attack. Uh, Dublin Rook along the h file is not very efficient. And that can be potentially very annoying here, I guess. So at least Black Knight uh, controls this g4, and I have no this plan, queen f3, queen g4, which was one of the ideas behind queen d3. That's, I think, uh, was a problem for Black because Black missed it. So to queen d3, Black played rook e7, queen f3, rook here, and queen g4, where after I have a great position, I guess. So well, I just attack this e6, g5 is also a weakness. Queen on g4 is placed very nice way because uh, spawn protects h4, f4 is like great blockading position, which is usually uh, not so um, possible for a queen, right? To be a good blockading piece. Here it happens. Um, yeah, I think here what already has a serious advantage. All right, uh, let's play. Edward and then tambourine man e4 c5 open Sicilian let's go for it uh. What do we have here, Sveshnikov? Sveshnikov takes G takes F6. Wow, that's a strange idea for, to me. I mean, combining bishop e7 with g takes f6. So usually when you take on f6 with the pawn, your bishop should be somewhere on g7 instead. Okay, I just play c3 then. No, it can't be good. Can't be good for black. Strange, very strange. Wow. 
Another thing, by the way, um, if bishop takes d5, I can even take with the pawn because the knight in this case is forced to. Uh, strange positions. Usually when the bishop is on f8, there is knight's e7 move here. There is no such a thing. And again, in my opinion, it's much better to uh, play f5 with the bishop on c8 because in many cases white just takes. So Black loses a lot of time. Black loses a lot of time here if compared to typical positions with the g takes f6. So now I should just occupy f5 square. And I will have an advantage. Okay. Queen to f3 looks like an option. a4 is an interesting move. Now let's let's try to combine the play on both flanks. Something really typical for Sveshnikov to undermine this b5 pawn. I have a direct threat of just taking on b5. And by the way, I can probably just try oh. a b5, a b5, bishop takes b5 now. Rook b5, rook a8, no, there is knight to b8, it doesn't work. Uh, but probably queen to a4 works. But then bishop to d3. Okay, let's take first, and then we'll see. So, I mean, bishop b5, rook b5, queen to a4, attacking the rook, rook to c5, b4. Um, what if bishop b5, rook b5, rook to a8, knight to b8, queen to a4. Okay, rook can go back to b8, but then also queen to a4. Okay, not so clear. Not so clear and not that needed, I guess. So what about h4 here? Let's try h4. Wow, this position looks so winning now. So now I can take on a4, or sorry, on b5, rook b5 on queen a4. Um, and then bishop f2, king f2, and rook takes b2 is possible. Alright, how to prepare this? Rook to a6 maybe. Yeah, rook to a6 looks interesting. Let's try that. Well, wow. black somehow finds some tricks. So if I take on h4 now, then knight takes d5, and my rook on h4 is hanging. Oh, should be also a great position for me. Um, even the exchange down. I mean, rook h4, knight d5, queen d5, queen takes h4, queen takes d6, attacking the rook on b8. Is there a good defense for black? There is also queen e5 check threat. Yeah, I think I can take it. Feels like a nice, nice uh, tactical idea. So queen h4, I mean, 
I take on d6 attacking the rook on b8, preventing castle and short. At the same time attacking e5 with the idea of double attack against the king and the rook. Yeah. At the moment I'm a minor piece up, so I think queen h4 is completely uh, forced. Isn't it? And knight on e3 just covering everything. Even d1 square, although it is not a big problem for me. I mean, at least right now, but let's imagine I take on d6 at some point, d file becomes open, rook goes there, and there is an idea of checkmating me using d1 square, but knight is here to cover that square. Castles. All right, I have extra minor piece have extra minor piece, so let's protect the rook and win the game. B4, all right, I'm not against some sort of simplification. And again, this knight, this knight on d5 looks great. Yeah, lost position, too many time was lost if compared to normal lines. So if you have the bishop e7, you should already capture on f6 with the bishop, I think. Um, so that was the first loss of time. The second was here, if you want to play f5, do it right now. Because anyway, that is a reaction. I mean, take it on f5, typical one. So this means you just uh, capture on f5. Not immediately, but after already making bishop b6, which gives you nothing. Absolutely. Just gives me some extra time. No surprises that uh, black was in trouble very soon. Here I could have tried g4 as well, <laughs> probably. But uh, I think a4 is just better than that, than anything else. Looks looks very, very natural. And yeah, my position was very good. Okay, uh, last challenge, tambourine man, accept. All the challenges were accepted tonight. Let's go. So it is probably the first, very, very first episode uh, when I lost three games in a row at the very, very beginning. And it's probably the very first episode when all the challenges were accepted. Very special episode. And it's very pity that I played like an idiot. <laughs> Almost all the games. A uh, question from Twy Hosex Andre. Are there streams over the weekend on another channel? Yes. On Sunday, as usual. So, previous Sunday, uh, I didn't do that just because I was away playing in Bundesliga. But this weekend, weekend there is no Bundesliga, so this means yes.
Well, at least I have a feeling that everyone, uh, everyone was satisfied, all right? There were no debates about, I mean, fairness of choosing whom to play and so forth. Just accepted each and every challenge. There is one more now. That's a mean story. <laughs> okay. Uh, let us go here. Work to E1. Oh, maybe it was already possible just to take on G4. Maybe not. After rook e1, it's definitely a threat, I guess. I was challenging there. Let's have a look. Mr. Normal Name. All right, in this game, finishes fast. I will take that challenge as well. Bishop d6. Now I can take on g4, I guess. Because my king is free to run away, more or less. Or maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. hg4, hg4, knight to g5. Knight to f4. I just take on g4. Queen h6, knight h3. It's lost for luck. Okay, let's take. Let's take the minor piece, which was hanging. takes here preventing castling by the way and now knight to h3 all right all right Extra minor piece. No compensation. Okay. So, you should remember, once there is rook on e1, there is already a threat of taking, usually. So, this tricky line is only good against not prepared players, who tend to capture the bishop early, without proper preparation. But against experienced guys like me, <laughs> this line can't work. Lost position. All right, so just grab the piece. Uh, it was already hanging. So, definitely the last game, Mr. Normal Name, except. 
black pieces. And Nimto. Let us play Nimto. Classic one with the queen on c2. And knight to f3. All right. d6. I'm going to prepare e5 quickly. And bishop d2. Smart approach. So what is going to have the bishop on c3? Now, let's try something strange. I'm just preparing bishop b7. But e4 is possible. Yeah, correct. Correct move. I'm already a bit... Slipping, I guess. D5. Okay, let's take and see how this goes. That is at least some sort of counterplay. Okay, rookie eight. Starts looking like modern Benoni, sort of. At least the pawn structure is similar. And now I can grab a pawn on d5 if I want. And uh, I think I do. Let's take it. I need some compensation for pain. That's why I grabbed the pawn here. I can also take on e4 if I want. I can also try c4 here, by the way. So many different options. So like c4, bishop takes c4, rook takes c4, check. Forcing bishop back to e2, then bishop a6. Wow, this can be also potentially very promising. You know, even what to try. c4, bishop takes f6, cd3. He's probably a refutation. Bishop d8 takes c2. Bishop somewhere, take on e4. Great position for black as well. Wow, I don't even know what to try. Let's take on d5. So, simply extra material. Bishop a6 was also an interesting move. I think it's also just a normal idea to save that bishop on the board to exert some pressure on e4 potentially. But it's important not to lose d6. So let's play queen to c7. The improved Benoni says, uh, Topper Harley. Yeah, now it's improved Benoni for sure with the extra pawn. <laughs> okay. Now it's a super Benoni, like Benoni without the Benoni pawn structure, even if I take with the d6 pawn. Should I take with the rook here, attacking e4? Uh, also playable. course should have captured just with the pawn and then playing along the d file but i want to try something active okay queen d2 is correct 
Can I play d5 now? I don't think so. e d5, okay, I can take everything on e1, but d5 will stay alive. So d6 is under pressure and I have to protect it this way. Not very pleasant thing. So now, what is going to play rook to d3? Wow. Feels like I'm just misplaying it. I'm just misplaying this position with the extra pawn. Mm. Not that surprising, I would say, but... Still annoying. Let's go for some tricks. I'm attacking h2. And prepare rook to h6 to protect d6. Should give me some time, I guess. Oh, by the way, there is also an interesting idea of playing king f8 and king e7. Wow. Can be also just a solid way of protecting d6, like centralizing the king at the same time. Now, I understand it sounds like a bullshit, but let's try it. I like the idea. After all, my opponent doesn't have so much resources, so many resources, I mean, to attack me here. In the center. So, looks like a good defender. So I managed to slightly improve my position in the center. Now I have active pieces, which is very important. Very important. And my pawn on d6 is no longer that bad. Okay. Okay. Should be winning, right? Come on. Please don't lose this on time.
No, <laughs> I didn't win this. I didn't win this, but of course I was obviously winning. Well, just like two or three seconds or something. So was very close to winning this. All right. Thanks a lot, guys, uh, for your patience, because the quality of my chess this time was just uh, very, very bad. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe I need some rest because uh, the week was really, really complicated. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, on Wednesday, I slept only uh, one hour and a half prior to playing in Pro Chess League. So, yeah, I'm not terribly surprised that uh, something went wrong today. In any case, uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you learned something uh, from these games, okay? Because uh, some of them were quite, quite instructive, in my opinion, some mistakes were quite instructive i would say okay yeah wish you great weekend and uh, see you very very soon bye bye